Hey there, Mercedes here from prettywebs.com and today I'm gonna to show you how to make another abstract background inside of Photoshop. This time we're gonna be creating a modified version of the pixel stretch. If you've never seen a pixel stretch, it's basically where you take an image and you stretch it so much that it becomes this abstract art. Uh, and it's really beautiful. This one is gonna be a little bit different because we're going more with the flowing fluid motion than just the dragged pixels themselves. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. So we're gonna start off with a 1000 pixel by 1000 pixel canvas. Our resolution is gonna be at 72. We are making this for social media or you know something for digital use. Of course, if you're gonna print this, you would change your resolution. You can also just switch over to CMYK color if you need to here as well. For us, we're gonna go ahead and keep it as it is and I'm gonna click create. So I'm gonna open up my layers and add a new layer right here. What I'm gonna do with this one though is add a color to it. Just a bright pink color is what I'm gonna use. So I'll use this right here, E61BAF. And I'm just gonna press command and delete to fill that background layer with that color control and backspace if you're on a PC. Now I'm gonna come over here to my shapes and I'm gonna choose the rectangle tool. I'm just gonna create a shape and I'm gonna come over here to my properties. I'm gonna make my width about 250 pixels and my height 1000 pixels. I want it to match the size of my canvas, letter V to grab that and then just put it in place right here in the center. If you don't see your properties here, when you're working with the shape, you will see the same properties up here so you can adjust your width and your height in this area right here. Also, we have a fill, which doesn't really matter, but we are gonna change this stroke. So I'm gonna make that a gradient. So I'm gonna go ahead and click here on the gradients, and I'm gonna choose this gold. I'm gonna go ahead and leave a link to this gold gradient down in the description if you want this exact gradient, but really, you know, just any gold gradient is fine. I know Photoshop comes with a lot of them. So I'm gonna change my pixels to about four pixels for this one and that's pretty much it so this is what we're starting with we have this rectangle now I'm going to double click here on the far right hand side I want to bring up my layer styles and I'm going to click on gradient overlay if you don't see this here just come over here to the the little fx button and it should be there now you can see I've already set this up so when you see this, you're actually not going to see that. What you're going to see is probably something like this and whatever gradient you have in here. So we're going to back up here a little bit. Uh, blend mode for this is going to be normal. Opacity 100%. Our style is linear and our angle is going to be 180 degrees. You can also do zero if you want. I just need the gradient to be going up and down in this uh, vertical direction. And our scale is 150% for this. Now I'm gonna go ahead and click on the gradient and we're gonna work with this right here. So our gradient type is gonna be noise. So that's how we got that pink color that we had in there. These are just random colors that are chosen by Photoshop. So I can just keep clicking randomize and I'll show you that here in a minute. I do wanna keep these colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and click okay. Okay again, so I've got my first bar here. Now I'm gonna hold down the Option key on my keyboard, Alt on a PC, and just drag these down. So I'm gonna drag down five of them. I'm gonna use four for this, but I'm gonna keep one extra just in case I wanna add more. Four is plenty and maybe even overkill, but I do wanna give you an idea of how whimsical you can get with something like this. Even just using one of these would be fine but I'm just gonna go all out and show it to you with four. So I'm gonna right click. So this is our first one right here. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna rasterize this and then I'm just gonna turn it off. Now I'm gonna come to my second one, double click on the gradient, come back in here into gradients. We have all of the same settings except this time I'm gonna click randomize and I'm gonna keep doing that until I get the colors that I'm happy with. I do have these options turned on for this one. So I have restrict color. 
you can turn that off and you can see you'll get colors that have a much higher contrast for mine and for the look that I'm going for I am going to restrict the colors so I'm going to click OK I'm going to go ahead and keep these colors so I'll click OK and OK again now I'm going to right click rasterize that and turn it off now we'll come back in double click do the same thing so we're going to do the same thing for all of these and just keep clicking until you get something that you're happy with right click rasterize that layer turn it off come to our last one click on that gradient randomize again and we're just going to keep going until we find something that we're happy with i'm going to click ok ok again right click rasterize this layer okay now that we have all four of our bars we're going to go ahead and start stretching our pixels so we're going to start with this layer right here i'm going to press command and the letter t that is going to bring up the transform tool and you see that when i did that i have uh, this little icon right here i can click on that and that's going to turn on the warp tool you can also come here to edit transform and then warp from here as well you'll see all of these little anchors come up now what we're going to do is just start moving these anchors around so just move it just in any flowing random position so we're just going to move it around until i'm happy with this now if you have something like this where it's just stretched a little bit too much you can also use these splitters right here so this will split it four ways uh, this one will split it vertical and horizontal so I can just grab that right there and then just add a new section and that's just gonna give me a new place where I can fold it so it does complicate this a little bit um, but it is an option so I'm gonna go ahead and leave that as it is now I'm not too happy with this section right here but that's okay I can always just put this on the bottom so I'm gonna turn on my next one again this is just an example command and the letter t on the keyboard and i'm going to click on my little warp icon right there and i'm going to start moving this around so again just like i did before just kind of moving pixels in different directions okay we'll go to the next one do the same thing command t warp tool move it around and I'll just go ahead and fast forward through these last two. Okay, I have all four of my stretched bars here and I'm just gonna move them around. I'm gonna hit the letter V on my keyboard to bring up my anchors and just start moving these into position i can work with how they're layered maybe move one up or down in the sequence here okay one more thing before we finish off here i just want to show you how to get rid of this stuff right here so you'll see a lot of these jagged edges right here if you want something a little more smooth let me show you how to get rid of those really quickly so i'm going to click on that layer so i'm going to press command on my keyboard and you'll see that little square come up so when you see that it'll be command or control on a pc and then just click and that's going to make a selection of that layer i'm going to come here to select select and mask you may not see this red color here you can change this to any color that you want uh, but for mine it's red and I'm going to just come in a little bit closer here and I'm going to shift the edge of this all the way to negative 100% and I'm going to come in and just smooth this out so I'm going to leave that about 25 I'm going to feather it slightly so about one pixel and then I'm going to add some contrast in there that's just going to give me a crisp edge now you can add as little or as much and now down here i'm going to choose layer mask i'm going to click ok so you can see right here it's added a layer mask to that layer just to give me that smooth finish right around these edges right here 
So from here, you can add layer styles to each one of the layers, adding in inner shadows, drop shadows, just to add some dimension to your design. You can also learn how to create custom shadows by following the tutorial that I'm going to leave up on the screen right now. That will help you to create dimension and shadow in the overlapping areas of a single layer. If you enjoyed this tutorial, make sure to like and share this video with somebody else who might find it interesting. And if you don't want to miss any more videos from this channel, subscribe and hit that bell notification so that you get notified every single time we have a new video out. And of course, make sure to go over to prettywebs.com for more design resources and tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching.